Hi everyone, Frank Spangler here for Learning Media Skills. And in today's lesson, we're going to continue our series on the 90D camera, uh, specifically looking at some of what Canon calls the creative modes <laughs> of the camera. We're gonna be looking at the P mode, the TV mode, and the AV modes of the Canon 90D. Let's get started. Before we get started, I wanted to cover an important point, and we'll be coming back to this point often as we move our way from the auto settings towards the, using the camera in the total manual settings. And that's, that's our goal. We want to end up to, uh, to a point where you will be able to work easily uh, in the manual settings almost without thinking of the adjustments that you're making. It's gonna become so second nature to you. We want you to get to the point where you can make manual adjustments to the camera in the dark. <laughs> because there'll be situations where you're filming in a low light situation in a dark room, maybe with a stage that's lit up, where you might not be able to see very easily where your dials are and where your buttons are. And yet you need to be able to make those kinds of adjustments in the dark. And so that's where we're headed. We, we want you to become so comfortable with the manual settings of this camera that you can do it with your eyes closed. But as we start this journey uh, from the total auto settings of the camera that we showed you in our last lesson to the total manual settings, I wanna start talking about the three main manual settings that you can adjust to give you more creativity as you take photos and video. There's only three, really. I mean, there is maybe a fourth if you consider focusing, but the Canon, for the most part, does such an amazing job at autofocus, especially when you got it on face priority and, and you're photographing faces, it just locks into those faces. So let's not worry about focus, but let's talk about the three manual settings that you can adjust to give you control over the camera. And as you have more control, you have more creativity. The first one is the shutter speed. You have a dial here that allows you to adjust your shutter speed as you start working towards the manual settings. And you might wonder, well, why would it be important for me to have control over the shutter? Well, uh, if you are filming fast action sports and you want to get a freeze frame of that sport in action, it's good to be able to have a very fast shutter speed. On the other hand, if you want to give the feel of motion, you want to have a very slow shutter speed. For example, if you're out in nature and you come across a little brook and there's water tumbling over some rocks and you want to get that nice, beautiful motion blur of the water coming over the rocks, well, you want to be able to set the manual settings of the camera so that you can have it a very slow shutter speed. So the, the camera, the shutter of the camera is up for a longer period of time and allows you to capture that blur uh, of the water going over the rocks. So, like I say, it gives you more creative control and allows you to get exactly what you want if you are able to use the manual settings of the camera. Now, the second thing that uh, you can control with the manual settings is the f-stop. Uh, now, you might wonder, well, what is an f-stop? An f-stop controls uh, the aperture ring of the camera uh, to allow you to tell the camera that you want more light coming in when you release the shutter or less light coming in as you release the shutter. And what it does is it adjusts that aperture so it's a very small hole to let just a little bit of light in when you release the shutter or to have it wide open so that you get a lot of light hitting the sensor of the camera when you release the shutter. So shutter speed and f-stop or aperture setting, how big your uh, opening is. 
The third thing is the ISO. Now, some of you who may be new to photography might be wondering, well, what is ISO? Uh, ISO basically refers to the sensor of the camera and the ability uh, of the user to adjust the sensitivity of the sensor. Uh, and that's great because what it means is you can have just one camera and be able to use it in a variety of different lighting situations. For example, if you're outside in the bright sunlight, you're going to want to turn your sensitivity way down so that the light coming through the lens of the camera doesn't overwhelm the sensor with such bright light. But then when you step inside and it's not as uh, bright inside, you can adjust the sensitivity of the sensor of the camera so that it can operate in a much lower light situation and still get great photographs. So the ability to adjust your ISO is a great feature of these modern digital DSLR cameras and mirrorless cameras. Some of the older students might remember back in the day when we used to use film cameras that you could buy different types of film that had different sensitivity to light. So if you knew that uh, you're going to be photographing outside in the bright sun, you would buy film that had a rating of 100. Uh, back in the day, it was ASA. Uh, you'd buy a film that was ASA 100. I think that changed to ISO even before we went to digital. But now we don't have to buy special film for special conditions. We don't have to be swapping out film when we step inside. We can just adjust the sensitivity of the sensor. So those are the three things that you can manually adjust to be creative in how you uh, expose your shot. Your shutter speed, how fast is it? How slow is it? Your f-stop, how wide the opening is to let the light in, to hit the sensor, and then adjust the sensitivity of the sensor itself. And in order to see this, grab your 90D camera and make sure it's something other than the green A. Why don't you just turn the wheel right over to the M and open up your screen here and notice at the very top of the camera you have AF drive and ISO. Click down on the ISO and you'll see that uh, you have some meters that come to the screen. Now if you uh, don't do anything after four or five seconds it goes away but it, press it down again and now you can uh, move the top wheel of your camera and you can see that you can adjust the ISO of the camera or you can have it completely on auto. Uh, but as we're moving towards being able to work in the manual settings, uh, you'll want to start experimenting with the ISO settings. Now, if you're indoors, you probably want to uh, start somewhere around 800 to 1000 ISO. Um, because there's just not as much light. If you're outdoors on a bright day, you'll want to set this I.O. setting to a, about 100, 150. Uh, and uh, then once you've got the ISO set for uh, your environment, then you really only have to concentrate on the shutter speed and the f-stop. So all you have to do then is uh, really just think about two adjustments and you'll be able to manually control um, your shots with just turning the top wheel and the back wheel. Remember, three things to adjust, the shutter speed, the f-stop, and the ISO of the camera. On the Canon 90D, um, the top wheel here will adjust your shutter speed. The wheel at the back of the camera adjusts your f-stop. And remember, for adjusting the ISO, you just uh, click down on the ISO once and start adjusting your top wheel, and that'll make the adjustments to the ISO. It's that simple. You could, with that knowledge, jump right to the manual settings of the camera and uh, start working. 
But let's take baby steps. As we make that transition from the auto mode to the manual settings, total manual settings of the camera, let's take a look at the P mode, the TV mode, and the AV mode. Now, the first question that you might have is what on earth do those letters mean? What is P mode, what is TV mode, and what is AV mode? Well, P mode stands for the what I call the program mode. There are some other um, terms that could be used for that. Some, I think, are, are called program automatic uh, that Canon uses. Basically, what it does is it's just one step above auto. When you put it to the P mode, the computer is still going to make... Uh, most of the decisions. It's going to make the decision on your shutter speed and your f-stop to get a good shot. But it allows you to make some adjustments to your focus and to your ISO. And so you have a little more control. In fact, it goes a little beyond that. The, in the program mode, uh, you can make some slight adjustments to the shutter speed and the computer will automatically make the adjustments to the f-stop in order to give you a well-exposed shot. All right, uh, and the TV mode. Now, some people say, well, what is the TV mode? Is, it, is, it, is this what I want to do if I want to shoot video? Do I put it in the TV mode for TV? Well, no, actually, TV stands for time value. And even that is probably a little confusing. What does time value have to do with anything? A better way to understand this setting, the TV setting, is let's call it shutter priority. In other words, it allows you to manually set the shutter speed of the camera for what you're wanting to take a photograph of and the computer will make all the rest of the decisions. All you have to do is set your shutter speed and that can be very helpful. For example, let's say you're out uh, filming some sports and you want to be able to get some of your shots where you're totally freeze framing the action. Well, you can just adjust your wheel to get a high shutter speed and let the, com the computer inside the camera make all of the other decisions. But then say you want to get those feet in motion, that kind of blurring the legs as they're in motion. Well, you can quickly uh, dial down your shutter speed to be shooting at maybe uh, a 30th of a second. And the really cool thing is no matter what you do uh, to the shutter speed, making it really fast shutter or uh, opening it up so it's really a slow shutter speed, the computer is going to make all the other adjustments so that you still get a good shot. All right, well, let's uh, take a look at the last uh, setting of the three, the AV mode. And AV stands for aperture value. And it might be easier to understand this as aperture priority. In other words, as a photographer, you have control over what you want the aperture to be set to and the rest of the decisions will be made by the computer of the camera. How is this helpful? Well, it gives you creative control over how much is going to be in focus when you take your shot. If you're shooting landscapes and you want everything to be in focus, well, you want a really high f-stop on the number system. You want to go up to maybe 13 or higher on your aperture. If you are taking portraits, uh, people's faces, and you want the face to be perfectly in focus, but everything in the background blurry to you know feature your person, then you want a really low aperture. In other words, you want to get right down to about 2.8. Or if you want just the eyes in focus and everything else, you could, if you've got the right lens, you can go right down to 1.8, or there's even some lenses that are 1.2. Uh, and uh, being able to make those kinds of adjustments in, uh, in a really fast-moving environment where you want to move from portraits to landscapes very quickly, well, it's nice to be in the AV mode because all you have to worry about is the uh, aperture setting. And by the way, earlier we were saying that uh, the top wheel 
is uh, for the shutter speed on the 90D and the back wheel is for the f-stop. Well, when you're in the AV mode, it's the top wheel. That's the one that you ingest. That's the one that's closest to the shutter. So they put it up here when you're in the AV mode. When you get to the point where you're shooting with the manual mode, then remember that the top wheel adjusts your shutter speed and the back wheel adjusts your f-stop. But just in the AV mode, your adjustments are going to be made up here in the top wheel, and uh, that's very handy. Now, before we head on over there, I want to um, let you know that I'm going to swap out the kit lens that comes with the camera with um, a lens that has a little bit more range on the f-stop. The, unfortunately, the kit lens that comes with the Canon, in order to keep the price down, they've provided a kit lens that... Uh, it, uh, especially when it's all the way out, only goes down to 5.6 as an aperture. When you are all the way in, um, you are able to go down to 3.5. Uh, so that's not so bad, but I wanted to, in order to demonstrate some of the creativity that you can do with some of these settings, I'm going to throw on my uh, 85 prime here. It's a beautiful lens. It goes right down to 1.4 as an f-stop. And, uh, uh, but I just wanted to assure you that um, if you don't have a budget for a lens like this, and this is about $3,000 here in Canada, um, if you don't have a budget for that, you can still uh, play around with these low f-stops in uh, some of these creative modes that Canon provides here uh, using a much cheaper lens you can get a 50 millimeter prime lens for about $200 that also goes down to 1.8 uh, f-stop and uh, so don't feel like just because all I have is the kit lens I, I can't do as much with these modes well just know that there is that option out there just head down to your camera store and pick up one of those 50 millimeter primes and you'll be able to go right down to 1.8 on your f-stop as you start to learn how to work with uh, some of these modes on the Canon camera. All right, let's uh, head on over and I'll uh, be able to show you a little easier um, what some of these modes will do. Well, we've made our move to the other uh, part of our studio setup here. And uh, what I'd really love to take you outside for this particular segment of the video, uh, take you out to one of our beautiful forests here in Canada. Unfortunately, uh, we are right now in Canada in the dead of winter, and it's just too cold to, to be filming out there right now today. And so we're going to make do with our, our setup here in our makeshift studio. I'm sure we'll be able to show you everything that uh, we need to share. Now, before we go to the creative modes that we're featuring in this video, I wanted to show you something back in the auto mode that I only just discovered today. I had no idea this was possible in the auto mode. And it is so cool that I have to share it with you. Let's uh, move our mode dial back to the auto mode. Uh, let's just uh, hit OK. Now, instead of um, just taking a photograph of this flower that we have set up here, this orchid, uh, in the auto mode, we could. I mean, you'll just uh, tap the screen there. It'll take a nice shot. But notice what's possible if you just simply uh, touch or press in on the info button once. You'll notice this little colorful wheel down in the corner. Go ahead and touch that. And here in this mode, I can actually override the auto settings of the camera. I can just uh, take my finger and uh, slide this little bar across and tell the computer of the camera just how much blur I want in the background. So let's say I do want a kind of a sharper background. I just slide that over, take the shot, and now we've got more in focus in the background. Most likely what you would ever want to do is go the opposite direction. If the camera is giving you something like this and you want to blur the background more, then uh, what you'd want to do is take this back so that it is blurring more of the background. That's a more pleasing shot there. And then take our shot. Now, I had to use the shutter release to get it last time. Let's see what happens if I hit OK and uh, now use the 
Yeah, that looks like that works. So let's take a look at one more thing with this. Uh, let's take a look at brightness. So if you're not quite happy with what the computer of the camera is deciding for your brightness, let's say you're in a backlit situation, well, even in the auto mode of the camera, you can uh, turn this on and make adjustments as to how uh, much compensation you want to go either way just with that slider bar. And I have to say, that's pretty cool. Take the shot. Now, I did mention there's a number of things that you can adjust here. Let's take a look quickly at some of the others. You can adjust contrast, saturation, but because we're gonna be doing all of that later in Lightroom or Photoshop, I would not recommend doing this. I mean, I suppose if you wanted to send something right off to Facebook without processing it, and you had uh, JPEGs being saved as well as raw images, you know, I suppose you could play with this, give yourself a little bit more saturation right inside. But the problem is this is gonna be what we call baked into the shot. And um, you'll always have that saturation unless you pull it back in Lightroom. So saturation, I would probably leave alone. Vivid, yeah, again, we're gonna be baking in some things that we might not want, but just so you know that they are there, you can actually override the auto settings of the camera just by turning on the info button. And that's pretty cool. All right, well, let's go on. Let's move on to uh, the P mode of the camera. And right away, you're given the option of uh, just uh, going neutral. Uh, or if you're in a bright setting, I suppose you could start with darker. But let's just go with the uh, standard, hit OK. All right, so here we are in the program mode. And remember the program mode, the computer is deciding the shutter speed and the f-stop. You have the ability to uh, select an ISO and some focusing and some other settings. Uh, but the computer, for the most part, is uh, selecting the shutter speed and f-stop. Now, even though it's doing that, you can override uh, the computer settings a couple of ways. In the P mode, the wheels, uh, the top wheel and the back wheel, do a little bit different function than what I was telling you earlier when you're in the manual mode. When you're in the P mode, the, uh, and if you don't see all of the uh, settings at the back uh, right away, just, just lightly tap the uh, shutter release button and you'll see more options at the back. Once you've done that, notice how if you turn the uh, top wheel that you are adjusting the f-stop and the uh, camera is automatically compensating by adjusting the shutter speed. So for example, we're set up to film some nice flowers here. We'd like the background to be out of focus. We know that in order to do that, we need a low f-stop. So even though the camera has gone with uh, automatically 2.8, at 1 60th of a second, we can change that. We can go down even further and may, let's try right down to 1.4 and notice that the camera has made the adjustment to the shutter speed so that you'll get a correctly exposed shot. If you wanted to go the opposite direction and have more of the background in focus, you could adjust your f-stop so that you go way up. Now, one thing I've noticed in the P mode the live view doesn't necessarily show you the change uh, of the focus of the background. It looks identical to what it was when I had it at 1.4. However, if I was to take a photograph, oh, and notice because we didn't take it right away, it reverted back to what it thought would be the best. So you have to take it right away if you're making these kinds of adjustments. So let's say we wanted f-stop 10, we have to take that shot right away. And then what comes to the screen, that is showing the, the background being a little bit more in focus. This particular lens is, uh, you probably have to go up to f-stop 22 in order to have everything in focus. Now, one more thing about the P mode that I wanna point out, and that is 
when you're in the P mode, the back wheel is going to do an exposure compensation. Notice what happens when we turn the back wheel one direction, the camera is going to say, okay, we want it brighter. Brighter than what the computer is deciding on its own. If you turn it the other way, it's going to go darker. So the back wheel in the P mode is actually exposure compensation, going darker, going brighter. Okay, let's go on to the uh, TV mode or shutter priority. It says it right there on the screen, shutter priority. All right, so here we are in the uh, shutter priority mode. And this time as we uh, turn the top wheel, notice that the shutter speed is changing. However, as you change the shutter speed to be what you want, let's say we want to stop motion uh, in a sports environment. We want to take it right up to, well, it looks like in this light, we're, we're inside and the light coming in from the outside is not, not the greatest today. And so we notice that uh, the aperture is flashing. And when it flashes like that, the computer is telling you, okay, you're at a thousandth of a second, but it's not going to give you a correct exposure or a neutral exposure unless you make some other adjustments because it's just too dark in here. So let's go back on our shutter speed at 1 800th of a second in this light. I can take a photograph at f 1.4 and let's see if I can just do it. With a, yeah, I can just touch the screen. So what if we do want to get that high shutter speed in a, a darker room like we have here? Well, you remember can make an adjustment to the ISO. So let's do that. Let's say we want that shutter speed and let's the top dial right up to uh, one two thousandths of a second to really stop that motion, freeze frame it. But notice the screen, it's really dark. It's not going to give us a, a correctly exposed image. If we were to take the photo right now, it would be dark. And so remember the compensation that we can do to uh, get back to a situation where our f-stop isn't flashing. We can go to the top section of our camera here, press down on ISO and just bring the ISO up. Let's maybe bring it to, up to 1600. Never really want to go too much higher than 1600 because then we start introducing grain into the shot. But I see that by adjusting the ISO that I now can take the photograph at one two thousandths of a second and still be uh, okay, still get a correct shot. It's no longer flashing. So let's take this shot and we've got a beautiful orchid. Now, let's say it's a waterfall situation. Uh, or you want to get the motion of the person running, well, we take our shutter speed and we go right down to say, um, oh, let's take it right down to 1 15th of a second. Now, the camera has made the adjustment so that we're now taking the photograph at 16, an f-stop of 16, which means that uh, a lot of the photograph is going to be in focus. So you're not going to have that nice Boku background, even though it's displaying that to the screen right now in the live mode. I'm not sure why I th Maybe this is the advantage of having a mirrorless camera. You have a better update on the live mode uh, But let's just go ahead and take the photograph and see what it looks like at 1 15th of a second and uh, shooting at uh, an f-stop of 16 and Now as it comes back you see the background is more in focus and because it's on a tripod it uh, and nothing's moving if this if we were outside in the wind like i would like to be this flower could be going back and forth and you'd get a little bit of that motion of it going back and forth because we had it down to 1 15th of a second and you can even go lower than that let's come back to our live mode and adjust that wheel some more we could even go up to um, one second ha having the shutter speed open. Now notice the camera is really demonstrating to us that this is just way too much light. But remember, uh, we're up here on an ISO of 1600. We can back way off of that. Let's see what happens. Let's hit the ISO button and uh, bring this right down. And now we're right up to uh, F22 and it's going to give us a nicely exposed shot 
even though the shutter is going to be open for a whole second. And uh, this would work really nice if you're out there and you've got a nice bubbling creek and you want that beautiful flow, capture that in your photograph. Now, I probably, even on a tripod, wouldn't hit the button here because that's going to cause a little shake. Uh, but uh, having the, the live mode on, I can just touch the screen and it's going to take that shot. Notice how much more the background is in focus. Now, one other trick I was showing you in a couple of lessons back to avoid that shake on one of these photographs where the shutter is open for a whole second, you could go to your drive button here and uh, just turn the wheel down to two seconds uh, delay. And what's going to happen is after I press the shutter release, it's going to wait two seconds and take the shot. So even though it's open for a whole second, because it's on a tripod and because I'm not touching the camera, it's going to take a nice clean shot with no shake around. All right, so again, in these uh, creative modes, the back wheel is there to help you make an adjustment to the exposure. If you're looking at the screen and you're not quite happy because you're in a backlit situation, there's too much light coming in from the window or whatever. Well, we want to expose for the person that might be sitting in front of the window rather than the bright light behind them. And so here in the P mode, the TV mode and the AV mode, the back wheel is going to allow you to do exposure compensation. And uh, in order to see what you're doing, you have to kind of touch the shutter uh, release gently and then start turning the back wheel and notice as we turn it to the right, it's going to get brighter and uh, that'll allow you to expose for exactly what you're photographing uh, more correctly with a difficult lighting situation. We turn it the other way, turn it to the left and it gets darker. So you're kind of overriding what the computer is deciding um, based on your human sight that you want it to, to just go one way or the other there. Notice that if you wait too long, you can't make that adjustment. You have to tap the little shutter release button again, and then you can make that exposure compensation at the back. And the same goes for the AV mode. Let's go on to that and notice uh, that you can make those same exposure compensations in the uh, aperture priority mode as well. But to really uh, make adjustments on the aperture priority is the top wheel. And as you turn that, you'll notice that the f-stop changes and the computer is going to automatically adjust the shutter speed to give you a correct exposure. And then as you turn the top wheel, you'll notice that the f-stop changes and for just a point of review, the reason why people like to have the ability to adjust the aperture very quickly is because let's say we do want the flower to be featured and everything behind it out of focus. Well, then we just know that we have to take that f-stop right down to 1.8 or 1.6, 1.4 with this particular lens uh, before we take the shot. And then as we take the shot, uh, we've got that two second delay. Um, the background's going to be out of focus. But if you're doing that, you're filming the flower or a portrait, and all of a sudden you see a group over here and you want everybody to be in focus, well, if you're in the aperture priority, you can very quickly adjust the f-stop so that it's up to about 10, maybe even 13 or 14. And now the shot you take of the group, everything's going to be in focus. And the computer has already made the decision to uh, change your f-stop. Now, because we're in a low light situation here again, it's giving us a pretty low shutter speed here. And um, if you were outdoors, you'd probably be fine. But in here, it's just you know, too low of a shutter speed. If we weren't on a tripod, that shot would be blurry. But remember, when you're in a situation like that, you still can actually uh, do it by changing the ISO. Let's just bring that ISO up again uh, to maybe... 1250 this time and notice that our shutter speed well it's still not very good uh, this is a pretty dark room we're working in let's take it on up to maybe 2000 and there we're still only at uh, 25th of a second you're going to have to be holding that camera pretty steady to get a clean shot 
So I would recommend in this case, maybe trying to bring this f-stop back down to about 10. And then you're at 1 50th of a second and uh, we can take the shot. And if you've got that two second delay, especially, uh, you'll be able to hold that camera steady while you get the shot. All right, well, I believe that's uh, it for our lesson today. I think we've covered a lot of ground and uh, it may be that you have to uh, watch the video a couple of times to let all of the information sink in. I recommend uh, watching it with the camera in your hand, following the steps as we go, maybe having the manual handy. And after you've watched it two or three times, I believe that all of the information will sink in and make sense to you. And you'll be ready then after trying these out for a week or so, I believe that you will be ready to advance on to filming and photographing in the manual settings. And that's what we're gonna talk about in our next lesson. So be sure and come back. If you found this video helpful, give us a like, share, and if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, that way we'll see you next time here at Learning Media Skills. So long for now.